Hi, I'm Aaron Ross, and I'm here to help you get started in the wonderful world of Maya. I'm a professional educator. Since 1999, I've been teaching college students, and along the way, I've also taught everyone from high school kids to seasoned professionals. I'm an Autodesk certified instructor for Maya, and I've also written three books on 3ds Max. Maya is the Hindu goddess of illusion, and that is what 3D graphics is all about, the beautiful illusion. Maya, the software, is a vast, rich, and complex environment in which you can literally bring your dreams to life. Partly because of its complexity, Maya has a very steep learning curve. It's notoriously difficult to learn Maya on your own because it's almost like learning a foreign language. That's where it helps to have a native speaker as your coach. I'd like to share with you what I call the oral tradition of Maya, the practical working knowledge of how to best use Maya's vast set of tools. Here's what you'll be able to do after watching this free series of five videos. Our main goal is to get familiar with Maya, so our first project is a simple one, an ice cream cone. This is a sped up time-lapse video from part five. I'm using a lattice to deform the shape of the object, and then I apply a material to change its color. And here's the end result. So let's get started by learning to navigate the Maya user interface. Here we are in Maya 2009 Unlimited with the default interface and preferences. As you can see, there's quite a lot going on in this interface. Uh, several rows of icons at the top of the screen and inside this panel down the side and all sorts of other stuff going on all over the screen. We'll be taking a selective approach to this and only covering the tools that are absolutely need to know for a beginner. So Maya is very deep and very complex. We're going to try to make it easy for you by just covering the stuff that you're going to want to know just to get started. The first thing we need to look at is whether you actually have the default preferences. If you've had Maya installed and you've played around, you know, you may have actually gone in and accidentally closed some of this stuff up or changed things around and gotten kind of confused and don't know how to get back. This is a clear example of we need to set Maya back to default preferences. That's done by deleting a special folder from the hard drive. And when you delete that preference folder, Maya will reset itself back to factory defaults. So let's figure out where the preferences are stored on my current workstation. That'll give me an opportunity to show you the Maya help system as well. In the upper right hand corner of the menus, you'll see help. And you can choose my help or just hit F1 or function one on your keyboard. This will open your current web browser. In my case, I'm running Firefox. I want to find out where my preferences are stored. So I'll go to the search engine. Now in this version of the search engine, it takes quite a long time for it to get started. It looks like it's reading the entire database and trying to figure out what's there. That's a downside to it, but when it's done calculating, you'll have very snappy results when you do your searches. Here we go. So once we've done that calculation up front, I can go ahead and search for preferences folder and hit enter on my keyboard. Okay. And it takes me to a bunch of pages. Here's one of them. This is the one I want here. Save preferences. Cause that in fact tells me the path or the directory where my preferences are stored. And you'll see it's listing all the different operating systems that Maya supports. I'm currently running Windows XP 64 bit. It's an unfortunate fact of life, but occasionally the Maya help documentation actually has errors. In this case, it's a minor error with the path, but it's close enough for me to find what I'm looking for. So I need to look for my My Documents folder. Okay, well, I'll just open up Windows Explorer and that takes me directly to My Documents. Oh, I see, here it is, Maya. I'll open that up and there's a folder in here for each one of the versions of Maya I have installed. Here we go, Preferences. I currently have Maya running, so I should shut it down first. Go ahead and quit. I'm not saving anything. Going back to Windows Explorer and I'm just gonna delete that Preferences folder just by hitting the delete key on my keyboard. Now when I restart Maya, 
it will have the default interface and preferences restored. I'm going to create default preferences. And we're back to the basics now. So if you ever do have a problem with your interface, that's the surefire way of getting it back. Now, let's take a look at some of these interface elements. Maya has a menu just across the top, as most computer programs do. But because Maya has so many tools, it won't all fit on one menu. So in fact, you've got lots of different menus to choose from. And you can choose from all of these menu sets from this pull-down list here. So you'll see a polygons menu set and a rendering menu set. The default is the animation menu set. Directly below the menus is an area called the status line. With these icons, by default, if you hover your mouse, you will see a tooltip. You'll also note at the extreme lower left-hand corner of the Maya interface, you will see the same information displayed. Okay, so this is called the status line. We can collapse parts of the status line to reduce visual clutter on the screen. I can close some of these, collapse them down, or reopen them as needed. Directly below the status line are the shelves. Each one of these tabs is a shelf. So you'll see surfaces, polygons, animation, and so on. These are all visual icons that correspond to menus. So in fact, the shelf isn't really necessary. It's just convenient. For example, my polygon shelf will allow me to create objects, simple primitives such as cubes and spheres. So here's the polygon sphere shelf button. Click it, and I actually get some feedback in the viewport to tell me what to do. Drag on the grid. There you go, I've made a sphere. I can click on cube, click and drag to define the footprint of the cube, release the mouse, then I can click again to drag up to set the height. Okay, so those are your shelves. 